good morning children from this video we are going to start with the next part of biomolecules chapter and that is enzymes this video also i'll be shooting in part so that it would be easy for the upload so we are starting with enzymes understand what are enzymes enzymes are all enzymes are proteins all enzymes are proteins but all proteins are not enzymes all enzymes are proteins but all proteins are not enzymes now enzymes are called as biocatalyst biocatalyst why because they catalyze they catalyze or rather they are capable of catalyzing a biochemical reaction they catalyze a biochemical reaction okay now there are uh, these enzymes are produced by a living cell enzymes are produced by a living cell you can categorize these enzymes into two types so two types of enzymes are exo enzymes and endo enzymes from the name you can say that exo manje which are acting outside the cell endo manje which are acting inside the cell so what are exo enzymes which act outside the cell example of these enzymes are pepsin trypsin which are acting outside the cell endo enzymes are the enzymes which can act within a cell for example we have learned the enzymes of glycolysis and krebs cycle example enzymes of glycolysis and enzymes of the krebs cycle okay so these are enzymes are called as endo enzymes fine now we have said that all enzymes are proteins but some enzymes are not proteins they are rna enzymes and they are called as ribozymes so all enzymes are proteins except the rna enzymes which are called as ribozymes called as ribozymes and we have learned one ribozyme that is peptidyl transferase which can catalyze the formation of a peptide bond between two amino acids right so that is an example of rna enzyme rna enzyme okay so these are the two types of enzymes that we have discussed now let us see the classification of enzymes and then we will see the next part so we we'll classify the enzymes now so directly i am going to classify the enzymes enzymes 
are classified into two types. Based upon the presence or absence of some extra group, that is simple enzymes. and conjugated enzymes. Now what are simple enzymes? Simple enzymes are the enzymes which are made up of only amino acids. So made up made up of only amino acids. Those are called as simple enzymes. Conjugate enzyme means these are made up of two parts that is the protein part of the enzyme which is called as the apoenzyme and the non-protein part of the enzyme which is called as the cofactor. Okay. The protein part that is apoenzyme and non-protein part that is coenzyme together forms the holoenzyme. So holoenzyme, holo means complete. Complete enzyme is formed by the combination of apoenzyme that is protein part and cofactor that is non-protein part. Okay, now the cofactor or the non-protein part is further divided into two types. Those two types are organic cofactor and inorganic cofactor. The organic cofactors are further classified into two types. Those two types are coenzymes and prosthetic group. Coenzymes and prosthetic groups. Okay, so this is the classification of enzyme. I am marking it a star over here. Very, very important. Questions are asked on this in your need exam. So this table, I want you all to by heart this table. I will provide you the notes of this enzymes. They are read, well written with me. I'll just share it with you so that you understand how I am making the notes and how you should be making them. Okay, so this table you are going to learn. And now we are going to uh, start with this part of the conjugated or the complex enzyme. We are going to start with the cofactor. What is a cofactor? Okay. Before that, we'll just quickly see uh, in simple enzymes, they are made up of only amino acid. That means <clears throat> the active site. Active site is the part of the enzyme which is going to react with the substrate and change the substrate into product. So main enzymes are Uddesh Kaya, so ki the substrate or the chemical is modified and it is changed into another chemical. So this in simple enzymes, the active site is made up of only amino acid. And in conjugated enzymes, the active site of the enzyme is formed from two parts, protein part as well as non-protein part. That is apoenzyme as well as cofactor together forms the active site. What is active site? We will be seeing it later on, but here just remember this much. Okay, so let us start with what is a cofactor. Cofactor is a small heat stable and easily dialyzable. Easily dialyzable part of the enzyme. Okay, that means it can be easily removed by dialysis. 
then we saw cofactor was classified into organic and inorganic so we will deal with organic cofactors in that the first organic cofactors were coenzymes now what are coenzymes very very important again a question neat question is asked on coenzymes so what are coenzymes coenzymes are easily separable from the enzyme easily separable from the enzyme okay they are involved in the transfer they are involved in group transfer reactions or they are they are able to carry the group from one enzyme to another enzyme so they require they require two apo enzymes two apo enzymes for their function they require two apo enzymes for their function one to carry the group and second is for the transfer of group okay so ek group dhyayla and dusra coenzyme na group dhyayla ase don coenzymes tanna lagtat function karayla now very very important question asked on coenzymes is what is going to function as coenzyme so question very very important generally vitamins vitamins function as coenzymes vitamins function as coenzymes which vitamins all b vitamins vitamins of the b complex that is b1 b2 that is uh, riboflavin nicotin these near uh, these enzymes niacin they function as coenzymes okay and example of coenzymes we have done in respiration as well as photosynthesis examples are fad flavin adenine dinucleotide nad nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide and so on so these are the different coenzymes am i clear with this question whatever i am telling you do only that much that is going to be more than enough for you okay so this was about the coenzymes next we are going to study is prosthetic group so what are prosthetic groups prosthetic groups means the groups which are tightly bound to the enzyme the groups which are tightly bonded with the enzyme groups which are tightly bonded with the enzyme those groups are called as the prosthetic groups that means they cannot be easily removed from the enzyme okay and the prosthetic groups are involved in group transfer reactions involved in group transfer reaction and the examples of prosthetic groups are biotin heme pyridoxal phosphate are these examples okay so what will be asked to you in the exam which group is tightly bound to the enzyme and the answer is prosthetic group okay you can just go through these examples you need not learn all of them fine so this is about prosthetic group now next important part are in organic ions we have finished with organic part right organic factors coenzymes and prosthetic group now let us deal with the inorganic Uh, cofactors
inorganic ions. Now, these inorganic ions, mostly they are metal activators. Metal activators which form one or more one or more coordination one or more coordination bonds with the substrate so what are inorganic ions they are metal activators they form one or more coordination bonds with the substrate very very important question for neat is asked on this and example of the inorganic ions are iron is an activator for the enzyme catalase zinc is an activator for the enzyme carboxypeptidase okay so iron for catalase zinc for carboxypeptidase and chlorine for the enzyme salivary amylase these is very important you are going to learn all of them or am i clear with this so these are inorganic ions okay um so with this we have completed the classification of enzymes main main part whatever is there i have discussed it with you whatever questions i am referring and whatever questions i am telling you in the videos please go through those questions learn them by heart so that you would be able to answer all questions asked on them okay and now let us just have a simple uh, difference uh, learn the difference between apo enzyme and co enzyme for your understanding so what is the difference between apo enzyme and co enzyme apo enzymes apo enzymes are the protein part of the enzyme co enzymes are the non protein parts second apo enzymes they have catalytic function co enzymes they bring the contact with the substrate and enzyme bring contact with substrate and enzyme third they are a part of the enzyme Third, a coenzyme can be a part of two different enzymes. Can be a part of two different enzymes. That means a single coenzyme can work with different apoenzymes. एक एक coenzyme दोन की वह जास्त apoenzymes हो बट काम करो शको because it is easily separable part from the enzyme, right? Then. apoenzymes are thermolabile that means they get affected by heat and coenzymes are thermo stable so apoenzymes are thermolabile coenzymes are thermo stable so this is um, the difference between apoenzymes and coenzymes all right so i hope you are understanding this part of the chapter and now we will quickly uh, see what is what are active sites of the enzymes active 
active sites. Now, what are active sites? Active sites are specific portions of the enzyme. Specific parts of the enzyme which are formed by formed by grouping of some amino acids. So specific portions or parts of enzyme which are formed by the grouping of some amino acids. That means suppose this is the enzyme. Enzymes are proteins, right? And this part of the enzyme, it is specifically formed by grouping of some special amino acids. So this portion we call it as active site of the enzyme. Okay. Now this active site of the enzyme can hold active site of the enzyme can hold the substrate by its size or shape or charge. So this part of the enzyme here the substrate can easily fit in and this substrate what is the main aim of the enzyme to convert the substrate into product. Right? Substrate means the enzyme enzyme act and the product means the enzyme. So this part of the enzyme is going to hold the substrate and it is going to get converted into product. Right? So it is holding the substrate by its size, shape and charge. And it is going to convert it into product. Fine? So this is called as the enzyme's active site. Now, what is the substrate? The biochemical upon which the enzyme acts. The biochemical upon which the enzyme acts is called as the substrate. And what is the product? It is formed by the action on substrate. Formed by the action on substrate. So substrate change of the product mode and that is the biochemical which is formed due to action of enzyme. Okay. So this is all about the active site. Uh, we will continue our video in the next uh, session, next part so that it will be easy for me to upload them. I hope this part must be clear to all of you. Thank you very much.